I'm Melissa Dubbin. And I'm Aaron Davidson. We're artists based in Brooklyn, New York, and Northern California. We apply collaborative processes in our practice and engagement with materials. Our most recent projects explore relations between the environment, computing, robotics, and artificial life forms. Delay lines are a physical method for manipulating time by increasing the distance of travel. A delay line can also be considered a way of holding a moment or memory, similar to the mediums of photography, video, or sound recording. Exploring these ideas through the material transformations of silica has allowed us to think about delay lines across a wide variety of time scales, from the geologic to the instantaneous. Our work delay lines and delay lines feedback draw from our research and work with silica-based mediums such as glass, integrated circuits, and soft robotics. Delay Lines explores the concept of time delay in mechanical, electronic, and biological systems and brings together research and collaboration across the fields of scientific glass fabrication or flameworking, silicone-based soft robots, game engines, and water-cooled computers. The story of human transformation takes place in water, inside the amnion, a bubble of protective fluid. We have no memory of this place, but our body remembers. Our middle ear retained a record of this moment, a vestigial feature of our time as fish. This transformation from sea to land also owes itself to silica, one of the most common substances on Earth, formed when massive stars explode. This stardust permeates our bodies in all aspects of the natural and built world through a variety of geological, technological, and biological transformations. When we delve into the story of silica, we encounter every aspect of human transformation, from its crucial role in our evolution, its role in creating our bones and supporting critical body systems, to our understanding of the world and universe around us through the technological advances that this material has enabled. In 2006, the first soft robotic manta ray was brought to life at the Systems Integration Lab at Okayama University in Japan. Without any practical application, it was set aside for later study. In 2019, we were invited to participate in the Okayama Art Summit. We had the opportunity to meet Professor Shuichi Wakimoto and the students at Okayama University and to see their current research. We were especially interested in the soft robots that breathe, bend, and transform. While the manta was not part of their current projects, we were captivated by it. It was one of the only forms that was a whole entity, not just a single synthetic octopus arm or disembodied human hand. Making some modifications to the scale and design of the original and using today's silicone-based fabrication materials and the lab's artificial muscle tubing, we worked with them to create the creature that inhabits this work. As an animal to present in an artwork, the manta brings so much with it for the viewer to consider. Manta rays are elegant, intelligent, and so very other from us, yet we share a very distant past. Can we still relate to each other? What language do we speak? In 2020 and 21, we had the opportunity to work with Professor Aoki Yispert's BioRobe Lab at the EPFL during our residency at EPFL Pavilions, further exploring what we can learn by observing the movement of animals and the creation of synthetic creatures. We asked the question of how robots and animals handle delays, feedback, and feed forward. Delays flow through a system and create patterns. In delay lines, feedback, we focused our collaboration with the lab on the simulation, the movement of the manta, and the velocity and turbulence it creates. These factors generate forms and alter behaviors in an aquatic virtual world within the work. Glass and water share many attributes. They're simultaneously transparent and reflective. They distort, magnify, and can create a barrier of separation. Neither solid nor liquid, glass is often called a rigid liquid. The transformation of silica to glass is a natural process. Sea sponges and microscopic organisms with glass skeletons inhabit the waters. Phytoliths abound in plants. Even the dust on the surface of the moon is materially related to glass. The human transformation of silica into glass allowed for new forms of vision, expanding our perception towards the microscopic and the telescopic. Glass enables our access to the future, our hands endlessly touching glass surfaces, planning our hours, gazing into a myriad of worlds. We are inspired by art and science as they both celebrate the unknown. Working in collaborations and across disciplines allows us to create objects and experiences that generate new questions, thoughts, and relationships to the entities within our environment.